What's up everybody? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're cleaning up the Komodo Komodo. We have not done that yet on the channel. Got a couple requests for it and I've purposely been letting this get dirty. Now, you can't really see it in the cameras as dirty as it is. It's actually uh, with the umbrella over top of us. Unfortunately, when I <laughs> bought this house, I didn't take into consideration my future YouTube career. And the sun comes up over the back and it's a real pain to shoot, especially if you don't know what you're doing with lighting and all that. Um, so, you know, we're, we've got some cloud over here, so you can't really see how dirty it is. But um, what I'll do is I'll give you a shot in the sunlight once it's all done. I mean, the beautiful thing about a Komodo Komodo is you can get them in many different colors and this cobalt blue pops like crazy in the sun. But anyhow, I let it get really dirty because I'm gonna show you just how good Zep works. We're gonna take all that off. Now, as you burn lump, the 32 inch has got a huge uh, area down there for all the ash to dump into. So you don't have to do it very often, uh, but Right now we can see that there is, you know, a, a bunch of ash in there. It's been a while since I did it. So we're gonna do that. I'm also gonna show you how to tighten up the spring in the back. If you look at my guy, the lid comes up, but it's not quite coming up as much as we like, and it won't quite hold a spot, right? So every once in a while, when it's up, it's no problem, but anywhere in between, the spring just needs a quick tighten. Now you gotta do that every once in a while, and uh, we'll get into that. But while we have you open, what I did do is maybe two cooks ago, I actually did pizza on here. And, uh, you know, I, I was cooking my pizza around 550. I let it get up to about 650 when I was done and just burn for about uh, an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. And what that did is that cleaned all this grease off on the inside from, you know, butts or briskets, things like that really dripped down a lot of grease inside of it. So we cleaned all that up. Let's take out our pizza stone here. And we're gonna start on the inside. And now I have all the racks in here uh, just because I've been using them recently and it's easy to store them all in here. Here's your top rack. Here's a half rack. And our bottom rack. So now I've got some charcoal left over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to empty this out completely. Um, I want to be able to vacuum and do a thorough cleaning job in here. So I've got a bucket that I use. This guy's got some leftover lump in it. Depending what I'm cooking, uh, if I'm going to do a new smoke and I'm only going to use a core of the basket, I, I typically will, will like a lot more newer charcoal than older charcoal, um, just because it's easier to light. Um, but what I'll do is I'll fill up this bucket, and then when I use more of the basket, if I'm doing steaks or if I'm doing pizza, I'll burn this all up. Uh, it burns fine, it just doesn't quite burn as hot. Um, so you just kind of mix it in there, uh, but I like to light newer charcoal just because it lights a lot better. Now, as you can see in here, we've definitely got some leftover. We're just gonna put in the basket. This is actually an unburnt piece. So once we've got that cleaned up, um, you know, if you've got a shop vac that you don't care about too much, or it's one of the ones that have got a big hose on it, you don't have to clean it up as much as I do. Um, this is actually a, a higher end shop vac. Uh, this is a Fest tool. I use it for my cars and uh, it's got amazing suction, uh, but <laughs> you know, it's not, it's an expensive shop vac. So I, I try not to get too much charcoal and stuff inside of it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give this a vacuum on the inside and we're gonna clean all that up and uh, get on to the next steps.
once you've got the inside all nice and cleaned, now you can vacuum with the ash in the bottom. As you can see, it's a little bit of a dirty job and it's hot outside. I'm sweating. I had a hard workout on my Peloton before I decided to come out and carry all my camera equipment up. And uh, it's over 80 degrees and it's only nine o'clock in the morning. So it's a hot one, gonna be a hot one today, but this is a messy job. So it really doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, so now we've got two ways to get our bottom cleaned out. This guy comes out. And we've also got a side access door here, okay? Um, whatever way you want. Uh, we can see ash here already, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna put on my other gloves here. Before I forget, inside I just took some of my gloves and I just wiped down, just to give an extra clean. I mean, you do not have to get that crazy with it. Uh, I'm just trying to give you an idea how to get a, a really good clean on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start sucking the ash out of here. Now, one thing to note, there's another plate here that pushes off. All right, so this goes inside. You're gonna to wanna to take this off. What this does, you know, one of the unique designs about the Komodo Komodo is it forces air to go through the charcoal at all times. That's what helps make it efficient um, and also a very, very clean burn. So this deflector plate goes underneath, you can take this off, and we just go back to cleaning it up. All right, we've got the inside clean. While we're here, you can see a little bit of grease build up around here. So we're gonna bring out our friend Zepp, and we're just gonna give this a spray. Now, just like everywhere else, this is all stainless steel, so it'll clean up easily. Let that sit on there for a minute or two, and away we go. Just like that, <laughs> just like that, it uh, comes right off. I just used a key to get in there and get right along the edge. It's not perfect. Take a toothbrush or whatever. And then this plate, got to make sure you put it in properly, but we're going we're gonna to push it past the sliders here and slide it right back on. Now, I know some Komodo Komodo owners out there are saying, but Jake, you could just pull out the basket. Why didn't you do that? So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, this is just personal preference for me. If we look in here, this entire basket lifts out just like this, right? You can lift this out and clean it out. And then you can get rid access to the bottom. Whatever you do, you never remove these guys. Once they're in and you've gone through your first cook, you never remove this bottom part. This is okay to remove. My big reason for doing that is quite simple. 
as I said, this is, this is my uh, shop vac I use to clean all my cars. Um, I don't want to go over top of the ledge and risk getting grease or anything down here because I'm going to drag it through my car. Um, so, you know, if you have one, this has got a, you know, a nice braided hose. If you've got a normal shop vac that's just got plastic hose and you, you don't care about it, totally fine to do it this way. I'm just showing you my way uh, because again, you know, I'm dragging that through my car to clean it out and I just, I don't want to risk getting grease on my seat. So you can do it either way. At the end of the day, you're going to get the exact same result, but we've got the inside all cleaned out. Um, I don't know, you probably didn't see it on camera, but I did take my hand and kind of wipe out the lid just to get into the scaling done. And now we've got the inside all nice and clean. You can clean your grates up however you want. Um, you know, we're talking, I talk about this on the channel, PBW. This stuff works amazing on stainless steel. You mix up some in water, you let it sit overnight, and uh, away you go. I've actually got the basket splitters inside uh, that I'll bring out in a little bit, and those will be all nice and cleaned up. The grates I didn't bother. Uh, the, the one issue with having the 32 inch grill is that it's very hard to find a big enough container to soak that in. The smaller grates can do it. I have done it before, uh, but it'll take them right up to new. Um, usually what I use it on is for the bottom pieces that are easy to get into a basket or the rotisserie baskets that I have, those come up amazing. Um, but you know, PBW, definitely if you've got smaller grates and you want to get them spotless, um, you, know, you can soak them in this. This is biodegradable and it will do an amazing job. So let's, let's talk about the outside here. As we can see here, this guy is quite a mess. So what we're gonna do, this is a microfiber cloth. I buy these from ragcompany.com, I think it is. Buy them in bulk. And you know the great thing about them is, is that they're not going to scratch your tiles or anything like that. But we're going to give this a generous coating. And right under here, you can't see it, we'll get to it in a bit. Um, this is actually stainless steel and we'll get that all nice and clean. But right away, we're coming right off the tile with very little work. Just let that sit there. Now look how easy that comes off. So as you can see, <laughs> I mean, Zep works amazing, especially on a Komodo Komodo. Now on stainless steel, like uh, my Lynx, it takes a little bit more elbow grease to get rid of it. Uh, but if you let it sit on there, it does a pretty amazing job. So if you're paying attention, you're gonna know something 
changed. I'll leave it up to you to figure out what it is. When I was editing, I realized my front camera overheated and I lost the last part of the uh, original footage. So we're clean, we're looking good. Uh, let me see if I can pull the umbrella away and give you an idea of how great this thing looks in the sun. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but you know, these come in a lot of different colors. This is the Koval Blue, and I mean, it's just beautiful in the sun. It really does shine. You could put a coat of wax on this, uh, but not like a Carnuva wax, like a, a sealant wax. Uh, Carnuva will just burn off right away, uh, but you can get a really nice shine uh, with a nice coating of wax on this, or just, you know, a clean version looks pretty darn good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you around and we're gonna show you how to do the spring. Let me back you on out. So when you buy one of these, if you watch my re review video, you'll see that it comes with a whole bunch of different things, extra grout, extra glue, some tools. This is a T-wrench and a normal wrench. And this has a spring on it. And right now it doesn't, like if I just let it go, it pops up, but it should open up all the way. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it around and we're gonna adjust that spring for you real quick. Now this thing weighs 930 pounds, we're on a paver patio, but the wheels on this thing are pretty amazing. So it's not too bad to turn around, put a little muscle into it. And away we go. So now we're gonna work on the spring and we're gonna remove this shroud. And here's our spring. So the way this works, there's a bolt on the bottom here. This turns into the screw. So we turn this and we pull the spring in closer. Now you don't wanna to do too much of this at a time. You gotta remember your damper is gonna be open and it is gonna be a little bit of a counterweight. Now we don't want this to open and bang across the, the most open point. It's pretty good. Right now it's gonna stop wherever I want it to. It's gonna open easily. So we're in pretty good shape there. We'll put back on our shroud. So now our spring's adjusted. If we open this up, you can see it goes 
almost all the way up. You could maybe do another turn. It's pretty close though. Um, nice and easy to move. Again, when you're working on your spring, make sure that you only go a couple turns at a time. Don't crank that five, six, ten times and then come and let this go because that spring is strong. It'll just yank this thing right up. You don't want it, you know, you don't want it going all the way up and pounding against where it stops. So find a sweet spot and you'll be in good shape. There's a, a full clean on this guy. Don't have to do it very often, but if you take care of it, it's going to last a long time. Um, usually, depends really, you know, how much you use it. Um, but when I start to see a decent amount of ash build up in the bottom from inside of it, that's when I start to break out the vacuum and, and clean it all up. Um, outside cleans pretty easily, as, you, as you've seen. Uh, I normally give it, you know, a wipe down every couple of weeks. Uh, just because I like to get it clean. But for this video, we left it dirty. We showed you how well Zep did. Thanks as always for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Doing new videos every weekend. I'll see you soon.